everybody, and welcome to the Sock Extravaganza episode of the Coffee and Craft Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Bernadette, and I'm coming to you from my craft room, which is in Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, BC. I have my coffee today in a really weirdly shaped Marvel Comics mug. Um, it is also um, it is a Sunday today, and if you can hear my super loud upstairs neighbors, apologies. I'm hoping with my new mic you won't be able to hear them as much, um, but you gotta film on the weekend when you got time. Unfortunately, that means everybody is else is also home. Um, I also am cat sitting this weekend for a um, for a neighbor, um, so I do have a cat that is wandering around, but I, she doesn't like to be picked up, so I'm not gonna pick her up. Um, but I'm hoping that like. It's just a warning, I guess, in case something happens. Hopefully nothing will. She's pretty chill. Um, but we're just gonna get right into things. So this whole episode is gonna be based off, like, it's gonna be about socks, it's gonna be about like, different heels, different yarns, um, different patterns, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I wanted to just start by going over a couple of questions um, that people asked when I asked last time if there was anything specifically that people wanted to know about in regards to socks. Um, I had um, a comment about basically going over yarn weights. Um, it's a fairly, there's a lot of different places listed on the internet. The Craft Yarn Council of America has quite a few different places, or it has like a whole chart. Um, in America they tend to list them by numbers like a zero to a six in thickness. Now they've added seven because there's the crazy thick yarns. Um, but generally, because I'm in Canada, we take, <laughs> it feels like we take like what we like from America and what we like from the UK and kind of shove them together. So we, we sometimes use the Craft Yarn Council guide for thicknesses, but generally it goes like, um, like cobweb, the thinnest, lace weight, sometimes they're the same. Um, these, it also varies a lot depending on the yarns. The best way to know how thick a yarn is is to look at the meterage or yardage per gram and that'll tell you approximately the weight of it. Um, I find that's the easiest thing to do. Um, but anyhow, so it goes cobweb, lace, like light fingering, fingering weight. Um, you can do heavy, heavy fingering slash sport. Um, sport weight, DK weight, worsted, then air and weight, um, then chunky slash bulky, super bulky, and then now jumbo. Um, I'd say everything past Aaron gets really blurry because <laughs> uh, uh, like Cascade Eco is supposed to be a bulky weight, and uh, I would consider it like a, an Aaron, not a bulky. But again, it's all personal preference and like gauge and what you're making and the look you're going for, which is the really fun thing about knitting. Um, so there's that. Um, same person also asked about best ribbing pattern. So saying, <laughs> it's funny when it comes to sock knitting, best ribbing pattern is very uh, controversial. Um, I hear tons of people say that two by two is the best ribbing pattern, like it's the stretchiest, it doesn't stretch out the most. Um, I hear lots of people say that one by one is the best. I hear some people be like two by three. Um, I find, with most of my socks, it's not about what ribbing pattern I use, it's about how long the ribbing is and what bind off I use. Most of my socks tend to have a one by one ribbing, um, which is one knit one purl, or a two by two ribbing, which is a knit two purl two rib. Um, and then on most of them, because I'm a toe up sock knitter, I do Judy's incredibly, you no, know, Judy's super stretchy bind off. Yes, Jenny's, no, it's Jenny's super stretchy bind off and Judy's magic cast on. That's what it is. <laughs> um, but what I do is I don't bind off in pattern. I bind off with the um, always just looping over as if it was a knit. And I find that gives me a really nice clean bind off without it being too flared out. Um, I have 400 bajillion pairs of socks in front of me. I was seeing if I could find one. So this is what I'm talking about. So this is Jenny's super surprisingly stretchy bind off, um, which as you can tell, super stretchy. Um, this is done on a one by one rib. I normally do at least at least an inch, um, and then 
if I do the yarn overs that you need to do in Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off all knitways, it doesn't quite do the flare out thing that it can sometimes do if you do them in pattern. So that's my hint about ribbing. Um, and then I also had another person ask, oh god, I hope you can't hear the people upstairs, they're so loud. <laughs> um, different ways to do um, heels with double points or magic loop. Um, so the fun thing is about sock knitting is that you can customize it to however you want to knit socks. Um, I tend to knit my socks mainly on magic loop. I used to be a two circs person, but I switched to doing magic loop because I like, th I like the length of the needle better. Um, but um, you can do heels with double points or magic loop like any kind of heel on either option. I know for most people if they're doing like a top-down heel flap they'll use double points, um, but I've done a heel flap with magic loop. It's just again about personal preference, but you can do any sock knitting in any format that you want on any kind of needle, um, which I know is kind of not the best answer, but it's the one I got. <laughs> because um, that's the thing I love about sock knitting, you can customize it to however you want it to be. You can use whatever method, whatever yarn, whatever stitch count. It's it's up to you and your personal knitting preferences. Okay, hey, so I have gone and sorted all of my socks by heels, um, and then after I talk about heels, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about different yarns and how they've held up. Because I've literally, literally, wow that's loud, I've literally collected all all the socks that I have knit in the past three, four years for my boyfriend and myself. Um, so you can see how yarns have worn and all that sort of stuff. I guess before I get into before I get into the heels, I just wanted to say um, that I have only had one pair of socks wear out, um, <clears throat> and it is because my it was the first pair of socks I knit for my boyfriend, and the only reason they wore out is because he wore them too much. <laughs> um, so he only had that one pair of socks for a while, so he would wear them almost every day repeatedly, and he, he wore them out. And I darned them a couple of times, but they kind of gave up the ghost. But I've, otherwise I've never had a pair of socks wear out. Um, I don't know if that's just because of the sheer amount of socks I have to rotate through, and now that my boyfriend has enough to rotate through as well, maybe that's not, um, maybe that's what stops them from wearing out, is just rotation. Um, all of my socks as well are some form of a 75-25 or like an 80-20 blend of wool and nylon. Um, I am the type of person who will try any sock yarn once, as long as it has some at least, at least 15% nylon in it. Um, Normally I say at least 20, the one I have knit with 15, I believe, um, is Smith & Hughes, um, Mary Ann Sock. The only reason I felt I could trust that one is because it was a different ply construction, so I assumed it would be stronger. Um, so far so good on that, but I'm just gonna hop in, sorry I have all my socks on piles on the floor, uh, I'm gonna hop in the first, <laughs> the first sock heel I ever tried um, was an afterthought. He, no, that's totally a lie, actually. Um, maybe I will put these down and show you my first ever socks. Ooh. I'm very smooth. I'm a great podcaster. Um, <clears throat> so my first ever socks were technically these. They are Knit Picks Felici in the Building Blocks colorway. They are done with a heel flap. Um, I believe I used the Knit More Girls Vanilla Sock Recipe as a starting point. Um, <clears throat> they are too short for me in the foot, 100% too short for me in the foot, um, which is why you can see they've kind of like curved out over the years. Um, I knit these, when I started knitting, I started knitting on tiny weird little double points from Knit Picks. So I was like, I don't like double points, maybe if they're super short I will like them. Nope. Um, you can see I got some really weird funky laddering on the side. Not... <laughs> it was my first pair of socks and the fact that I still have them and they don't have holes in them is pretty impressive, especially because it's Knit Picks Felici, um, which isn't my favorite of sock yarn, um, but I will get into that more later. Um, so that's my first ever pair of socks. 
So I did start top down with a heel flap. Um, these guys were a follow up. Um, same recipe, same idea. Um, this is loops and threads. Ooh, can't, it's loops and threads. It's a cashmere blend, as you can tell. Um, they have fuzzed up a lot because of the cashmere. Um, they are very soft and warm and cozy, um, but they haven't worn particularly well. Um, no holes or anything, but just like they fuzzed it up a lot. Um, I also wore them a lot when I started sock knitting um, because uh, I think we had a really cold winter, which is what inspired me to start sock knitting and listening to the Knit Mores go on about Operation, um, Operation Sock Drawer. But, so that was both of their patterns. If you are both the Knit More Girls pattern. If you do want to try a, uh, a good top-down recipe, I find that's a really good place to start because um, they have very good instructions. Um, at least it gives you a starting point. I find with sock knitting you always need, there's always a certain amount of experimentation and you're always going to have a couple of pairs of socks that fit kind of weird. Um, but now later in the game I find it's really nice to have these socks to look back on and I still wear them um, even though they don't fit properly because they're warm and filled with nostalgia. So just for reference, by the way, about how much shorter those are <laughs> than, than a normal pair of socks that actually fits me. Um, there's that. Um, and then like my third pair of socks I did in a rib pattern. This was like Knit Picks Stroll when they did like variegated ones. Um, these are, these have a funny story to them. Um, this one fits fine. This is also the watermelon colorway, I believe. Um, same idea. This is top down, but it's ribbed all the way. This is also the um, only fingering weight pair of socks I've knit that is 100% ribbed. Um, I, I don't know if it was just like the fact that these went wrong or what, but like the one of these that fits is great. Um, but I was clearly super keen to get the second sock knit. So the second one is um, too short on the leg. Um, and then too short on the foot, <laughs> but I didn't like by the time I was done with these I was done with them um, Again, I wear them like this um, No one sees them in my feet or on on my feet. So Whatever and when they wear out they wear out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the socks once they wear out, but I'm thinking about doing like some fun sort of Probably a scrappy sock yarn blanket of some kind like just cut it out, cut the places where there's a hole and just maybe like knit with the the nostalgic yarn and some weird funky thing. So yeah, that was pairs um, socks. Uh, one, two, three. Um, from that point onwards, I think I think that was the last heel flap I did. Then I switched to trying different heel types of heel flaps, and it took me until this year to come back to them. Um, because I, well, either they were recommended in the pattern or I was working on a pair of colorwork socks. I also just realized I don't have my Christmas socks here. So none of my Christmas socks are, um, are around. So I have all of my regular socks and not my Christmas socks. Um, but yeah, it took me to doing colorwork socks to come back to a heel flap because my Odenenbaum socks had a heel flap on them. And I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. And it's good for, um, it's good for color work, especially because you don't have a lot of give in like the leg. Um, these are my Dale socks that I knit. Um, this is Lady Galt, like Lady Galt Croy with some yellow opal. Um, and they look really small, but I promise they fit. Um, and the heel flap I find with the color work just gives you like a good fit because it allows your foot to come in and kind of settle. Cause this is not as elastic as a plain vanilla sock would be. Um, and then these were a toe up heel flap, which I kind of want to try more of in this like traditional square way of heel flaps. These are my fine and dandy socks that I knit out of, um, this was a hand dyed speckle from like, this was words. This was the anniversary colorway for wet coast wools from was it three years ago? Something like that? Or the year before? Something like that? Um, and I had two different skeins, so I kind of alternated them. But yeah, so this was a toe-up heel flap that was in 
the pattern. <clears throat> I do want to try that more. Um, I do also do want to knit this pattern again because once you get the hang of these little flowers, it's, ugh, it's so much fun and kind of addictive. After going through all my socks, I realized I should challenge myself to do more pattern socks and more colorwork socks this year. So I have a lot of plain vanilla socks and I love a plain vanilla, but I think I need to challenge myself a bit more. I had a 50 gram skein of Patton's Croy that I wanted to use the most out of. Now, because these socks are old, they are like, they're all clean. I made sure to wash, <laughs> wash everything, but they are worn. I've worn them a lot. Um, so this is an old Patton's Croy colorway with an afterthought heel. And this is like Patton's Croy for the ribbing and the heels and toes as well. So this was one 50 gram um, ball that I'd split in half um, and knit the most out of that. Um, it has worn, I wore these a lot. This was a kind of painted colorway to begin with, but this is what like Patton's Croy heels look like after three, four years of wear. Um, I have apparently 400 hairs stuck on them. <laughs> They've worn really, really well. Like it's a heel. Um, it was like a heathered colorway. This kind of shows you more of what it looked like to begin with. And then that's after being worn in a boot a lot. Um, but like no holes, nothing. These were knit, I think on a two and a half millimeter, something like that. Okay, I need to take my sweater off. I'm dying. Sadly, I think, um, <laughs> I think wearing a wool sweater and drinking coffee in a room with no airflow um, isn't the best recipe for staying cool. Um, yeah, so that was the next pair of socks I knit. I used a different, I used a toe up sock recipe that I found on Ravelry, an afterthought heel recipe in it. Um, Cause this, I just wanted to use up all of the yarn that was here. Um, hopefully I will have put what I, what sock recipe I used after that. Um, from this pair onwards, I was working on developing my own sock numbers. Um, I also went down to a different sock needle size after this pair, I believe, or maybe the next pair. Um, I went down to a 2.25 um, from a two and a half. Patton's Croy is a little bit thicker. It's more of a sport weight, but I knit this as a fingering um, because my gauge has drastically changed since this pair. Um, but after I developed my own sock numbers, um, kind of was off to the races. So that one pair, um, and all of these are afterthought heel socks. Um, I've knit them mainly for myself, but I've also knit them for my partner, um, in age of sock yarns. I was gonna split this up by like yarn afterwards, but I don't know, or like favorite patterns. Um, these guys were the oldest after that pair, and these were a hand dyed yarn by a dyer, I believe, who isn't dying anymore, but she did a Care of Magical Creatures Club. Um, and this was the Kappa colorway, and this was Pygmy Puff. Um, and because they were Pygmy Puffs, I did Hermione's Everyday Sock which I haven't done in so long and I really want to do another pair of, but yeah, Hermione's every day with an afterthought heel. And those are just plain vanilla. Um, as you can tell, these are just like a normal 75, 25 blend, um, but they're wearing fairly well. Um, I find the trick is with afterthought heels is to pick up extra stitches when doing, when doing this part of the heel. The, um, depending like if you're getting it stretched out across the top of your foot I find like you need to knit for my boyfriend who has a little bit higher arches I knit four rows um, after picking up extra stitches to add extra depth to the heel um, and then like depending on everyone's foot's a little bit different so depending on your personal foot shape you may have different issues but if it's stretching too much try knitting a couple of rows and then try trying it on um, I found the easiest way to nail down a fit for all of these socks was to try the foot, the sock on the foot. Like if it's getting, if it's too wide for your foot, you need to decrease a little bit faster. If it's too narrow, probably rip back and then maybe do two rows between every decrease. Um, um, you can pick up more stitches 
in the corners so you have more um, more stitches for your heel or um, I know Jasmine sometimes talks about the fact that like maybe you need to put in an afterthought heel instead of like 50% of your stitches maybe you do 60% so you um, like if you have a 60 stitch sock instead of doing like putting an afterthought heel in for 30 stitches maybe you do like 34 so there's a couple on the other side so it goes around a little bit more. Oh, fun facts everybody my camera decided it was going to die yesterday about halfway through filming um, and I found out it takes my camera a solid three four hours to be able to uh, recharge and I had places to go and by the time I came home there was no more light so we are here um, a day later <laughs> not remembering where we were talking about afterthought heel socks in a different outfit and with a uh, um a different cup of coffee in a um a hilarious moose pun mug which is one of my favorites Ooh. so hi welcome <laughs> welcome back um i think i said i i hope i said everything i wanted to say about afterthought heel socks um if I didn't say it, afterthought heel socks tend to be my go-to um, for when I don't want to interrupt a striping pattern, um, like these guys, and like, oh, still a giant pile of socks on my floor. I did not clean them up. <laughs> or like these guys, where I want to make the stripe go in this way. Um, they're also really great if you have a gradient and you don't want to interrupt the gradient, like these. Um, well, this was a sock blank, but same idea. So you can knit it all the way up and then throw in the heels after. Um, cause I do have a pair of socks that I knit, um, that is a gradient that I put a heel, well, a short row heel in and they look odd. I like them, but they look odd. Actually, well, I guess I'll just jump right in to the, the next heel that I had, um, which is a heel that a pair, uh, quite a few of you said you hadn't heard of before watching my podcast, which I was thrilled about. There's nothing more fun than introducing sock knitters to new new heels. Um, but this is my OMG sock heel, um, or my sock collection of OMG heels by Megan Williams. Um, the particular socks I was thinking of that have, um, there were a gradient that I just threw an OMG heel into are these guys. So as you can see, like this one's not too bad, but like the heel clearly like makes a bit of a jog. This one's pretty, pretty bad. Like it's a full, full chunk cut out of the sock. Um, so in, in retrospect, these should have been an afterthought heel. Um, the thing I love about the OMG heel is the fact that it is just like a quick little heel flap. I'm trying to find a contrast pair so I can show you um, easier. Oh, here we go. So it's just, Although black's a bad option, but you can see how small the heel is. Just a quick little heel. You can turn it in under 30 minutes. Um, you do have to knit the foot a bit longer and there isn't a gusset. So it's not a great option for people who have high insteps. Um, but if you can wear like a regular short row heel, um, or you don't have to make too many alterations to other sock patterns, this is a fantastic sock heel. Um, I've made some for my boyfriend. His instep is a little bit higher than mine, so it doesn't work as well. But I do like trying different things for everyone's different socks to find out what works for them. Um, and I have knit um, many, 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 many different pairs of OMG socks. So I've got that one. We got some sparkly opals, opal socks, bleachy socks that were part of my box of socks. Um, it's random, some hand dyed, this one I did contrast toes and heels on. This is actually only 50 grams of a hand dyed sock yarn and my friend has matching socks in that. Um, more patterns Croy that are OMG, uh, Knit Picks Felici in the Time Traveler colorway, um, which I want, actually while I'm thinking of this colorway, I want to get some of this to knit a tie out of. Um, for my boyfriend for like a super subtle like Disney bound level of of um, Doctor Who cosplay <laughs> and then the this is a pair of OMGs for boyfriend 
Um, the thing I do like um, about Megan's design for the OMG heel is that she has also designed um, a deeper version of it for those who do like a bit more of like a longer gusset and need a bit more kind of cups your heel in a really nice way. Um, I actually hadn't worn my version or the socks I had that have this heel on them in a really long time and I forgot how much I enjoyed it. So Megan has this version called the Spacious OMG Heel. You can see the regular OMG, really small, tiny little gusset, little heel turn, then you move on with your life. This guy has a much longer gusset and has like a, a nubbin type bottom to really cup the bottom of your heel, which leads to a really, really comfy fit, which I really like. Um, the other thing I really do like about the OMG heel is, although I'm a top sock knitter most of the time, um, both, I know the OMG and I think also the spacious OMG can be worked top down or cuff up. Or, <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> Toe up or cuff down. Um, so this is a great option. I think everyone should try it at least once. See how the fit is. Um, I did, I can't remember what these, this pattern is, um, but these have a um, spacious OMG on them as well. And then the ones I have for me that I wore recently are the expanding community socks that have the OMG heel in them. It's a really fun pattern and I think I wanted it in a pattern, a color, way that isn't so crazy pants. I don't know if you guys can see. Maybe? I can't see if you can see. <laughs> but it's kind of got like this really fun ribbing um, and it integrates beautifully into the heel flap, which I really like. So like it goes all the way down. This is the only other like ribbed style sock that I have ever knit that I enjoyed knitting. And I think this needs to happen again in one of these. I don't know which one, but in one of them. Probably one that's a little bit more subtle. Mm -mm. Maybe this guy? Maybe? Who knows? Just staring at my sock yarn. Although it would be a fun thing to do in... I have some of Amy of Stranded Dye Works yarn, and I think that would be fun. Because she's part of my expanded community. So. Um, yeah, so that's the spacious OMG. Trying to move a bit faster on this one because I don't have limited time for filming and I also I'm pretty sure I'm going to cut out a lot of the afterthought heel stuff. So I don't know if you guys actually want to go through every pair of socks I've ever knit ever. Um, yeah, this one, this heel, um, this, well, the spacious and, well, actually just the spacious one. I really enjoy it if you're doing like ankle socks because of the way that it cups your heel. Um, I find that it really helps the sock stay on your foot, um, which is something I really like. Um, Megan also has a bunch of, um, Megan has amazingly detailed instructions on how to get your socks to fit properly. Um, so I also find that that's extremely helpful. Um, and while it was at least helpful for me, doing like these guys because they're ribbed also allows for a better fit because they're very stretchy. If you're ever knitting a pair of socks for someone and you don't know what size their foot's going to be, ripped socks, because it gives you a ton of wiggle room. It's not the funnest thing to knit, but maybe knit them in like a sport weight, <laughs> so they'll go faster. So a popular heel that I've knit a couple of times, but I've realized just isn't the sock heel for me, um, is the Fish Lips Kiss heel. Um, it's a well-written pattern, um, but I find it doesn't fit my foot very well. Um, so I don't, it's not my favorite heel in the whole world. The first one I'd ever knit was on this pair of Jaywalkers, and in retrospect, I completely messed up this heel. Um, they are also very old, but they are my favorite pair, one of my favorite pairs of socks. I should also knit more of these this year. Maybe these and like the Geek socks, I think, because these are, these are super fun. Um, so good use of self-striping yarn. Um, this is a Knit Picks Felici in Falling Leaves, I believe. Um, I actually, fun facts, um, used to knit f um, as part of the Harry Potter house cup, um, like knitting knitting group, and these are won an award one year when I knit them. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, this Fish Lips Kiss Heel, I messed this up 
on one of the sides of the socks really bad. You can see that's a disaster zone. Um, so like this was my, these obviously the heels don't fit my feet very well. Um, a friend of mine wanted to try the heel again a year or so ago. So I tried it a couple of times with her because God knows I can't just like try a thing again once. <laughs> um, so I tried it on a pair of white birch fiber art socks. Um, these guys here where I pulled in order to not interrupt the stripe sequence, I pulled from the inside of the ball to do the heels. Um, just cause I didn't know how the, the stripes were going to end up. Not my favorite integration of heel striping, but whatever, it's all good. Um, and I do just really like these socks. Um, and I tried it a few more times. I've used it on my mustache droid socks. So these are my like R2D2 socks and those are C3PO. And yeah, it's just not, it doesn't fit my foot the way I'd like it to. I don't know what it is cause it's, an after that heel fits my foot fine. And shape wise, they're very similar. Um, but I think it's just because my afterthought heels are maybe a bit bigger. So that's my afterthought. And that's a fish lips kiss heel. I think there's just like not enough real estate here for me. Like there just needs to be a bit more. And I'm sure I could alter this if I wanted to, to make it a bit deeper like this one. Um, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to really. Um, Cause like I can't, you can adjust the depth and the, the pattern for the fish lips kiss heel is in depth and amazing. Um, and really well written and very thorough and easy to understand. And it's supposed to be able to expand to fit people's feet like commercial sock heels, which is the point of the fish lips kiss heel. It was designed to mimic um, heels on made on commercial sock machines. Um, but it just, it doesn't work for my feet. Um, aesthetically, it is a beautiful heel though. Like the heels in these socks are some of my favorites because they're real pretty. Um, it's really, I love it for doing a contrast heel. I also have it in, um, these guys, like these aesthetically beautiful stocks, but they don't fit my foot really well. Um, and I have plenty of other heels that do fit my foot well. Um, so I currently don't have the patience to finagle this one to fit. It's not bad. It's just not like a hundred percent. I'd give it like a 75% good fit on my foot. Um, I did also knit my boyfriend one to see if it would fit his foot and it's a little tight across the arch. So I think he has the same problem. Afterthought heels are fine um, because we can make them deeper. Um, but I just, the finagling of the fish lips is just not, not for me. Um, but that's the fun thing about sock knitting, right? Customizable for your own foot, which is what makes hand knit socks the best. So one of my favorite heels for, um, for my boyfriend. And also I'm realizing for me when I d I'm not worried about interrupting the stripe sequence and like, I just need to get a heel done. Um, or it's like some crazy yarn where you're not going to be able to notice, um, is a flegal heel, which is a version of a toe up heel flap, um, which is great for high arches. It's great for people like me who have fairly flexible foot fit. That's a technical term. Um, <laughs> my feet don't need any specific needs apparently, except not with the fish lips kiss heel. Um, so what it is, is it mimics, it has a gusset and mimics, I'm trying to find a good pair. I have a bunch in my lap here. Um, these will probably be the easiest. So these are my pencil socks by the yarn enabler. Um, but they are a solid color so you can kind of see. So it's got a gusset, it's knit from the toe up, and it's got this triangular shape um, heel flap, which is really cool. Um, and at this point I have this memorized. And for any socks like these, where they're like pretty much a solid color, or like crazy opal socks where like you really aren't gonna notice if a bunch of the colors go missing, um, it is my go-to. You can also actually, you can see the heel flap really well there. So it's a really cute little, really cute little triangle heel flap. Um, and it is fast because of how deep it is. It gets you farther on a leg, or at least I always feel like it does. Um, 
and it has become my go-to heel for all of Brian's socks, which if you saw me on the Wet Coast Wolves podcast, you would know. Um, I have so many socks for him. It's something you can adapt to a sport weight. Um, these guys here are Brian's Christmas socks, which are very well worn because he only has one pair. I need to knit him another one. Um, you can adapt it for thicker weight socks. Um, those are thicker weight. These are thicker weight. These are a Mindville sh um, speckle striping. Um, and you can also just use it on regular old sock yarn. This is the Arna in Carlos. I had someone correct me nicely in the comments about how to pronounce that, although I make no guarantees that I will um, correctly say that forever. It's hard to retrain yourself. Um, no disrespect intended, it's just hard to retrain yourself to say something different. Um, got some Patton's Cry. More Regia, which again, I love. Like any German sock yarn, 75, 25, wool nylon, kind of like, not rustic, but it's just not like merino levels of softness. It's the best. You can like, actually, for the most part, I machine wash in a gentle cycle all of my socks and hang them to dry. Um, but I have had Regia and Opal socks sometimes accidentally get stuck in pant legs and go through the dryer, and they are fine. Um, they, like, they are some of my favorite sock yarns in the whole world. Um, also, Regia has, like, a 10-year guarantee on their socks um, that if they wear out before, like, 10 years after you finish knitting them, you can get a new ball of yarn, which I think is crazy. Um, but there's those... Yeah, Regia, Patton's Croy, and then Brian's favorite of socks in the whole world. The um, This is Halloween by um, Smith and You, which are his favorites. Um, Brian feels the way about Chris or Halloween socks the same way I feel about Christmas socks. So, so I'll have one pair of Halloween socks, and he'll have like one or two pairs of Christmas socks, and then I'll have a hundred Christmas socks, and I'll have a hundred Halloween socks. That's the Flegel. Um, I have a couple of like miscellaneous, as I'm calling them, heels. Um, on my sock knitting adventure, I knit, these are some Spice Man socks, which were a toe up heel flap with this like garter gusset, or reverse sock and gusset. I knit these because I heard about them ages ago on the Knit More Girls podcast. Um, and this, it was a fun pattern to knit. I knit these at a time where I didn't know how to get my socks to fit properly, so they're a little bit big. Um, I think I will try it again sometime soon because I forgot about them, actually. <laughs> forgot about them. But I'm going to, I think I'm going to try these again on a different pair of socks. Just because this is really cool. I enjoy, like, this little section-y thing. Um, and this is just some, like, Lion Brand Sockies. Again, if a sock 7525 and it feels like a little bit harder on your hands, it will wear like iron. Um, I've also tried the Vanilla is the New Black Heel. I called these Brian's mullet socks because they're fairly boring in the front, but they're a little bit of a party in the back. Um, they have like a reverse, to me they kind of look like a reverse flegal. Like if I put them this way, like they have the flegal triangle, fl like heel flap on the bottom and then the gusset has just like this ribbed section which kind of helps it fit the heel. Um, I've only knit this one once. It, fit Brian, it fits Brian's foot like fine. There's no fit problems. Just don't know if it's my favorite heel. I've only recently, recently in the span of my life, um, knit these. So I don't. The verdict's still out on these. I have a couple more of these like gradient style um, sock yarns. So I think I'm going to try knitting it a couple more times to see how I feel. Aesthetically, again, I don't think it's the prettiest just because it does this weird backwards gusset thing. But like, I do like this part because I think that allows for a better fit. This is the super scientific <laughs> fit method. Um, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, and then these are super old. This is one of my first splurges on hand-dyed sock yarn. Um, it kind of went a bit awry for me. Um, 
for a couple of different reasons that I'll explain, but these are a pair of stitch, stitch surfers, um, which were a very big pattern a few years ago. These were also like my first foray into like crazy sock knitting after doing vanilla socks. So the reason I, so what I had is I had a yarn, it was inspired by Gollum and Smeagol. So I split it in half, like I split the yarn in half and then knit it obviously the same colorway, but split in half because Gollum and Smeagol are the same person trapped in the same body and they're like super nerdy socks <laughs> and I like them a lot. Um, the heel like fits okay. Like it, I feel like it's just some version of a short row heel. I literally knit these like four or five years ago, so I can't truly remember, but it looks like just a regular short row heel, um, but it just didn't fit into any of my other patterns. Um, I have a lot of feelings about these socks. I love them from the fact that like I was able to interpret this like fandom thing in such an oddly specific way. Um, but when I bought the yarn, I thought that this like neon yellow color was going to be significantly more gold. Um, and over time they've also se like severely felted. <laughs> um, they've severely felted and like they faded too. So like when I bought it, I didn't think it was going to be neon. Cause it's supposed to be like gold for the ring and this is neon yellow. It's not the same. Um, and I don't know, it was one of those moments where like, you know, lack of truth in advertising, I guess. Um, I don't know if this dyer still dies, but just in case I don't want to, like, I'm sure her stuff is lovely, but I just had like a bad experience with this particular, particular pair of socks. Um, like, I do love the fact I was able to, like, try this sock trend without having knit a sock that was entirely one color on one side and entirely another color on the other side, um, because that's kind of what you're supposed to do. It's a form of in charge of sock knitting. Um, you're supposed to be able to take two 50 gram skeins and kind of do, like, like, I don't know, split personality type socks, but this allowed me to knit it without having to have a crazy, crazy split pair of personality socks. But taking a look at my sock pile, I was going to make like a recommendation of sock, um, sock patterns. Most of my socks are vanilla, um, but for something that's got like a little bit of added interest, um, like I said before, the Hermione's every day, where is it? I wore my other ones yesterday, <laughs> so they're not here, but the Hermione's every day is one of my favorites. Um, it's just a really basic stitch. I like it a lot on variegated yarns. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it on self-striping yarns, um, just because I feel like it's just slightly too much. Um, solid yarns, I feel like there's so many other fun options to do, and just having this little bit of a Hermione's texture helps get me through a variegated yarn, which doesn't have the quite the, um, the level of potato chippiness that a self-striping has. Um, which is why most of my self-striping socks are vanilla. Um, boop. Um, I also, for like a little bit of added interest, I really enjoy, I didn't talk about the pattern on these at all when I brought them up. Um, these are the Zigzagular socks, um, by Susie of the Prairie Girls, I believe. It's just got this fun little twisted cable up the side of the sock, um, which is really fun and just like gives that little bit of added interest because the rest of it's just plain plain vanilla she has a different heel in the pattern um than the spacious omg but i think it's a really fun combo um because both susie and megan are also podcasters i think i used these for the pow cow at some point um but i can't remember for sure um <laughs> oh, like i said before Exact the zigzagular socks, super fun knit. Um, I substituted the heel. I believe they have a different heel in there. Um, zigzagular is a great option for self-striping yarns. Um, there's also the geek socks that kind of make a rounded chevron, which I want to try. Um, they're on my to try list this year. Um, well, I'm thinking of my to try list. There's the Erica Luter, the woman who designed Hermione's Everyday Socks. 
she has a couple of different Harry Potter inspired socks and I she has like Weasley Homestead socks which are kind of like a broken waffle stitch that I want to try um on I can't grab it <laughs> on a pair of like brown socks that I was going to knit for Brian for Valentine's Day so you'll probably see those reasonably soon um the fine and dandy socks as well um I want to knit at least one more pair of these I believe in a different speckly or variegated color um this little stitch here um can be a bit fiddly to do but once you get into um get into the rhythm of it it's really fun and easy um they explain how to do like get these to fit fairly easy um it's a fairly adaptable stitch pattern um she has a video on how to do these little flowers so don't be afraid not that hard um when I'm thinking of those I also want to try the speckled in space socks which I think will be fun um these guys are yarn specific but I've also seen people do these with like yarn that they have in their stash of similar colors um this is like a pencil inspired sock um the yarn is by yarn hoarder or not yarn hoarder that's amber <laughs> um not the cozy knitter yarn enabler that's it yarn enabler um, she dyes this to be a self-striping skein. Um, when I got it, there was a mini for these and a mini for these. Um, but I think now she dyes them. I think where like it goes one direction. I can't remember. But I've also seen people take this pattern and do it with just like they have a gray yarn and a pink yarn and stuff for the toes. So I think these are really, really fun. She does also have um, paper that's white and striped. Um, because it is a hand dyed yarn, it is a little bit of a treat yourself type thing, but she is a Canadian dyer. Um, so I think it's a fun thing to treat yourself on. Um, and these are, every time September rolls around, these are my go-to socks. I don't get to go back to school anymore, but I at least have back to school socks. So that's, I guess, a pattern and yarn recommendation on my part. Or like a really, I guess I'm still, do, do, do. For a good like beginner color work sock, I really like the Dale socks um, just because of how basic the pattern is. It does have color work going down onto the foot, um, but it is really basic, like every few stitches color work and the heart. So if you wanted like kind of to dip your toe in, you could also just do this upper part and then that part and then you could leave the foot plain if you wanted. Um, there's a lot of room for flexibility. These are Molly of a Homespun House's pattern. Um, but you can use whatever yarn you want. I've seen it done in pretty like, speckly stuff. I've seen it done, um, well, obviously in my really basic, <laughs> basic yarns. Um, but that's really fun. And then again, I talked about before, the Expanding Community Socks by Megan Williams. They don't look really great now, but um, they look fantastic on feet because they're ripped socks, so they look a bit odd off feet. Um, Megan Williams in general. She has fantastic hat patterns, fantastic sock patterns. She just released a book. Like she's a really creative designer um, and she explains her patterns really well. Um, and she's a crazy knitter. Um, there was like, I think last year, the year before, she knit a pair of socks every week for a year, which is nuts. It's literally insane. Um, this year I'm aiming to get, I think, one knit every other week by the end of the year. So I'm hoping to have 26 pairs knit. Um, but like that's not like a hard goal it's just like where I'd like to be um I also I haven't knit these yet because this was a book I don't remember if I talked about this or not but this was a book I bought when I was a baby knitter um called socks around the world in knitted socks and the whole book for the most part is beautiful color work socks like um, and when I was a baby knitter, I wanted so badly to be able to knit these and knew I wasn't at the place where I would be able to. Um, so I got it hoping that at one point in my life, I would have the skills to be able to do it. I'm trying to find the pair that I want to cast on like real soon. Um, I think I got this at Michael's, but I'm sure there's like a hundred other places. Um, like these are really basic and beautiful. Um, they do have, I think there was a joke about this on the Wet Coast Bulls podcast, but they do have Argyle socks, but who knows? Maybe I will conquer my fear of intarsia and knit at some point. Um, they also have these really fun ones that go sideways. I think it's, 
it's an important thing I think to have to buy things like this that maybe your skill isn't there yet but you will get there at some point um, and it's I think an, an important thing to give yourself inspiration to reach or to try for things that might scare you oh these are the ones I'm I think I'm gonna cast on fairly soon actually because they're just like a really basic herringbone and I have some really fun solids I think that would work um, but I think it'll ooh. although I have a ton of self striping I'm hoping it'll be a year of color work socks and pattern socks and stretching myself to knit from stash and knit things that will be will challenge me as a knitter which I think are good and then also probably having vanilla socks that I can just turn my brain off and watch a movie and go around and around and around um, I did realize that I haven't talked um, I didn't make a recommendation for like a great beginner sock pattern um, the knit mores pattern is really good if you want to try something with a heel flap there is also just like basic heel flap, flap recipes out there on the internet um, if you want to try toe up socks with an afterthought heel the way I do them I have what I call a recipe it's not hasn't been tech edited by anyone other than me <laughs> um, but I have a recipe that I use to teach my toe up afterthought heel sock pattern or it's a oh, words I have a pattern that I use to teach my toe up afterthought heel sock class um, that I taught at wet coast wolves for years and hopefully I'm looking into teaching at other places as well um, but it's it walks you through how to get the foot fit of a toe up sock correct um, I find doing an after that heel is the easiest place to start because you don't have to worry about turning a heel as a knitter who's like maybe afraid of socks I find it's easier to nail the fit of the sock if you can try it on as you go you don't have to worry about turning a heel um, and then once you're comfortable and kind of have your numbers down it's easier to play with the numbers you've established um, in an easier pair of socks that's why I have 400,000 pairs of after thought heel socks because uh, they're they're easy um, they're easy you don't have to worry about the heel till you have time to think about it um, like you can sit down and brain for a bit and yeah it's it's really simple and a great place to start um, there are also really other other wonderful recipes and stuff out there if you don't want um, if you don't want to do mine that's okay I understand or if you read it and you don't it doesn't make a lot of sense to you that is also okay um, Susan B Anderson has some really nice ones there's I think 104 afterthought heel sock recipes out there um, but I just didn't find one that I liked for teaching my class so that's why I have one also if you did want to try a top-down heel flap but wanted to maybe do a thicker pair of socks um, Tin Can Knits has their rye sock and they have step-by-step -step tutorials on how to like turn a heel and pick up heel flap stitches and all that sort of stuff um, worsted weight socks are a great way to experiment with um, like just with sock construction um, and they go a lot faster um, my pattern is written for fingering weight yarn so if you did want to try like your first pair of toe up after thigh heel socks in fingering weight yarn that's what those guys would be for um, and now I'm gonna talk about my favorite yarn recommendations I'm just gonna collect my socks here I feel like I look like a crazy person just like sitting here like a goblin or a dragon with like my piles of socks um, okay so what I'm gonna do first ooh, is go into like what I consider like my more budget friendly sock yarns because um, sock knitting once you get into it depending like you can justify anything at a certain point in time um, but when you're starting out I know that like the price point of sock yarn can be a bit nuts um, a good budget friendly option I'm sure most people have heard of um, is the Nipix Felici which I have knit quite a few times and I realize I think I'm missing a pair um, but like these are all my Nipix Felici socks um, oh actually I missed the most crucial pair did I pick it up somewhere else in this pile oh I did okay so these are my Nipix Felici socks um, I have a love-hate relationship with the sock here um, I love it because it's really nice and soft it's an affordable price point um, but <laughs> one I feel like a good sock yarn shouldn't be soft <laughs> it's it's not going to wear as well and they haven't worn as well because they are softer um, 
like looking at the heel on this, like the heel doesn't fit right. So it's gotten more wear than it should have. But these are a couple of years old and this is felted to all hell and is significantly thicker than it should be. Um, and like it's... I feel like a good sturdy sock yarn. I have socks that are the same age as these um, that have worn better um, because merino, although it's lovely and soft, isn't the best sock yarn, isn't the best wool for socks in my opinion. Um, in most cases I believe merino isn't the greatest wool option, um, but it's kind of the only option we have for the most part. Um, for socks, I believe it's better to have like a generic wool blend or like something that's a longer staple, like a BFL or maybe like a Coriadale. Coriadale, Coriadale is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but like when it comes to like more budget friendly options, just a mix of wool will wear significantly better than a merino will because merino is a short stapled wool and isn't designed for hard wearing situations like socks. Or it's why like if you knit a merino sweater, why it immediately pills. <laughs> Because it's a short stapled wool and it's not gonna wear as well for as long. Really nice and soft, wonderful yarn, um, but like I think unfortunately because of how popular it's become it's flooded the market and it's not as great for as many things as we all think it would be. Um, I'm happy that wool has flooded the market and become popular but I just wish there was like more diversity in our wool options. But anyhow, it's the least of my problems with Felici. Um, the price point is super affordable. Um, hopefully I have put it um, at the bottom of the screen here um, and they have sales on their sock yarn fairly often like nitpick sock yarn in general can be quite affordable if you get it on sale um, my issue is is that like the quality varies a lot I've heard of a lot of people getting knots in their yarns um, I've had multiple well actually this was the first time I had this problem like I've had yarns where like beautiful every color is distinctive you're good to go and then I had these which is a more recent release of Fleechy where like this giant section here is supposed to be two different colors and it like pretty clearly isn't <laughs> which drives me nuts because I love this combo of colors and this 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 is ridiculous I realize you get what you pay for when it comes to this sort of stuff but but when it's advertised as two separate colors in a stripe it just annoys the Jesus out of me. Sorry about all the throat clearing. So that is an option. I just think like maybe be careful about which colorways you purchase. Um, it is really easy to be sucked in by how pretty the sock yarns are. Um, clearly I have not been immune to this. Um, I do have more in my stash. <laughs> um, but it's not something I think I'll repurchase in the future. Like it's really nice. Um, but it's just again a bunch of different issues with it um I'm also taking a bit of a policy in my life where I'm trying to not buy because I have so much sock yarn um I'm obviously not buying sock yarn at all at the moment but I'm trying to take the approach that if I can't find it in real life in front of me or it doesn't magically make its way to me I don't need it <laughs> but again I realize a lot of people don't live um in places like Vancouver that have an abundance of yarn um, it is a wonderful problem to have <laughs> Um, another option, I feel like there's got to be other versions of this for people who aren't in Vancouver, who aren't in Canada. Um, Diamond Footsie, like I talked about. I'm trying to find the other ones. This is the problem with putting a giant pile of yarn on your lap. I'm gonna find them at some point. Alright, well Diamond Footsie is a great option. My expanding community. Also these guys, um, I know what Coast Walls has it. I think some other places in Vancouver may have it as well. Um, but I, what I'm going to do is just clump these guys in with like pretty much any weird sock yarn you can find that's a 75% wool, 25% nylon. Um, if the colorways are something you like and you think it like, hmm, who knows? Like, I think just give it a go. Um, like I even tried like the the Red Heart sock yarn when they were still making it, which is very similar to the Sirdar sock yarn. If it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, I say go for it. I have yet to be disappointed by a pair of random socks in a random sock yarn that I bought. I was like, hmm, that's like $10. Can't really go wrong. So there's that. Um, in a similar vein, 
was the Deborah Norville socks that I was talking about before. These are a bamboo blend, um, but again, the price point was so so good on these. I can't even get these the right way around. The price point was so good on these, I couldn't not couldn't not try it. Um, I think this was one fifty gram ball that I split in half because again, I was just trying it out and I put in some jaw wall for the heels and toes. Um, yeah, it. I'd never tried a bamboo blend before. I'm pretty sure this was on sale at Michael's for like three bucks. Um, so again, why not? Um, I'm sure that stuff has to exist somewhere else in Canada because I haven't seen it at Michael's in a while. I don't know where else it would be. I know you can find it on the internet. I have a feeling Webbs probably has it. Um, but who knows? I don't, don't actually fully know. Another great option is Drops um, Fable, Fable, however you say it. Um, Gain 75% wool, 25% nylon. Um, come in these really fun striping colorways. These are Brian's, these are mine. Um, it is a, I think it's the same mill that makes the Red Heart, or made the Red Heart yarn slash the Sirdar yarn. So it feels very similar. It's a good regular fingering weight yarn. These are some of the oldest socks I have knit for Brian. There's like no holes, there's a little bit of pilling, but like he wears these a lot and they have held up really, really well. These I have, I knit into another pair of socks and then pulled out and then re-knit. Fantastic. My knit, or not knit picks, Lion Brown Sockies, also a really great option. Um, the only place I've seen this is at Michael's. But again, coupons, great option. Only place I've seen it in Vancouver is Michael's. I'm sure you can get it other places. If you live in New York, they have a whole Lion Brand store. Um, but yeah, this is, again, feels very similar to the Fable Fable sock yarn. Um, so it's, I think it's worth a try. It does this really unusual striping type thing, like where it makes thinner stripes. Um, so I think it's always fun to try something else. This would be a good one for like Hermione's every day because it doesn't have the potato, potato chippy stripes. I was gonna say if for anyone in the UK, a um, couple of sock yarns that I bought that are either from the UK or, or I bought while in the UK. Um, West Yorkshire Spinners, fantastic sock yarn. This is harder to get your hands on in Vancouver than I wish it was, so it's actually easier to order it online from them. Um, it's a wool blend. I think it's like 75, 25, but 35% of the 75 is BFL. So it wears really, really well, and it has gotten so soft with wear. <laughs> I ironically put Nip Pick Stroll in for the heels and toes because it was the only one I had that matched a similar color, <laughs> which feels silly. But when those heels eventually wear out, I'll replace them. Um, I'll replace them with West Yorkshire Spinners heels. That's the fun thing, by the way, about doing contrast heels. Um, or I guess you could do it if it wasn't contrast either. When the heel wears out, you don't have to darn the heel. You can just knit a new heel, which I think is genius. I have yet to have this problem happen, but it's good. So West Yorkshire Spinners, highly recommend. Don't think that's a revolution. Um, this yarn I got in when I was in Ireland a few years ago. This is Rico Design Yarns um, that I got at This Is Knit in Dublin, um, which actually, as I say that, I realize not part of the UK, um, but Europe in general. And I'm sure they probably have Rico, I believe, is a German company. So I'm sure it is elsewhere in Europe. Um, but I thought it was a really cool striping pattern. It's very manly and not tremendously fun, but they did have a lot of other colorways as well. This is just what Brian chose. Um, so I recommend this as well, but this comes from the land of just good German sock yarn. So, um, do, do, do. And while I'm thinking of good German sock yarn, um, I will always recommend a Regia, which this is the Arna and Carlos, um, I believe be wrong. I think this is the Arne, Arna and Carlos. Same with these guys. And these are just generic random regia. They have so many fun different variations in color. Can never go wrong with these. Um, and then same thing with Opal. Um, 
So just go through. I'm just pulling, <laughs> throwing things on the floor. Um, you can never go wrong with a pair of opal socks either. Um, good hardy sock yarn. Actually makes really good baby sweaters as well. Um, Holly Yo, a local designer, does a ton of sweater designs with um, with opal yarns, which is really cool. Because the uh, the baby sweaters look like you did a lot of fun color work, but because of the baby sweater, you didn't actually have to do the color work. Because <laughs> um, babies grow so fast. But yeah. Opal. I think both of these are Hunderwasser. Um, I haven't been able to find this, like, sparkle version of this again. Um, but if you can get your hands on it, it's fantastic. The Hunderwasser colorways are awesome. The regular ones are awesome. I'm trying to find. Yeah. These guys fantastic. Um, actually, as I say that, I realized these are also Hunderwasser, so I'm sorry. <laughs> which I found out um, afterwards is an artist, which I did not know. So I'm not an arty person. <laughs> I just thought of it as sock yarn, so that's my point of reference. Um, I'm also going to throw in these guys. Um, this is HW Comfort, um, and this is a sock yarn that I can't remember the name of. But I'm throwing these in as generic German 7525 sock yarns. Um, if it says it's from Germany and it's a 7525 blend, again, go for it. It will be a good pair of socks if you like the colors. I don't think it's money wasted at all. Although really, having said that, I don't think spending money on sock yarn is ever money wasted. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then coming back to another one of my favorites. <clears throat> oh, so much crap in my throat today. Um, did you probably picked this up as we were going as one of my favorites is Patton's Croy. Patton's at one point was a Canadian company, but is no longer, but I like to pretend that it still is. Um, <laughs> but actually it may be a Canadian company, but it's not made here anymore. I don't know where the line falls on that. Um, I haven't looked up their literature. But I know it's not made here anymore. Because um, really not many things are made in Canada anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, patents cry in every color all the time. This pair is actually the pair that made me fall in love with patents. It's kind of like a fun level of ugly, but I enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> and then it is also my go-to yarn for making socks for Brian. Um, these guys... I have more in my stash and like these guys are are Patton's cry. How many of these episodes is going to be me turning around and pointing at this wall? Um, <laughs> these are Patton's cry, um, which I can't wait to knit up actually. Um, friend on social media pointed these colorways out to me and I can't wait to knit those. Um, I did one thing I don't like about Patton's is the inconsistency. Um, it is a little bit thicker of a sock yarn, but only on some colorways. And then, like, some colorways, you get, like, a random, like, the thickness can change, the gauge can change tremendously. Um, the, I've never had a knot in Patton's Croy before, but I won't lie, knots in yarns don't bother me that much, um, unless there's a ridiculous amount. If it's 100% wool, you just spit splice it and you're good to go. Um, with socks, I'd probably just, like untie it and keep going and just weave in another end. I am also the type of person though that doesn't mind weaving in ends. Like it's not my favorite thing, um, but I don't mind it. But um, so as I showed earlier, giant clover color sock. These I did not put a contrast heel in, but please look at the significant difference in the leg length. <laughs> like this was a different, different heel contrast color. But, like, the difference in the amount of yarn is crazy. Um, I think this yarn is a little bit thinner, because the gauge on this is also bulletproof. Um, these were it knit much earlier in my knitting career, so I'm wondering if my gauge has just tightened up significantly. Um, but also, like, between these two pairs of socks, um, they were knit within, like, they were knit within a pretty close amount of time to each other and I had a little bit left over of this to put in my blanket. I had none of this. So like the level of thickness and gauge is crazy. These are very thick socks though. 
like crazy thick socks, <laughs> uh, which is also good because they are my go-to when it is super cold in Vancouver. Um, mine, not Brian's, obviously, but yeah. So those are my rec recommendations for like budget friendly or yarns. Um, I tend to knit a lot with commercial yarns. Um, knitting hand dyed yarns is always a treat yourself type situation for me. Um, sometimes I love supporting indie dyers and things like that, but when you knit a ton of socks, it's, as I'm sure you would, can all understand, it's hard to knit with hand dyed sock yarn all the time. It's great to support local and indie dyers when you can, um, but it's easier said than done sometimes. Sadly, I realized that like with my hand dyed sock yarn, I do tend to hoard it a bit. Like there's a decent amount of it here, but I'm, I'm hoarding, hoarding it. Um, I think I'm always afraid about making poor life decisions, but as I knit those, you'll see them. Um, and I'll talk more about the yarns as we go, but of the hand dyed yarns that I have worn and tested um, in the treat yourself area, um, there's the yarn enabler with her pencil, um, pencil yarns. Her base is fantastic. Like I wear these a decent amount and they are wearing great. Um, they, like I said, she has the pencil yarn. She has monkey yarns. Um, I want all of them, but again, trying not to buy, <laughs> trying not to buy yarns. Um, I'm thinking of other Canadian dyers. Um, the, this is not, um, Susan's most exciting colorway. Um, but these, are Riverstone Yarns, which is um, one of my favorite dyers out of Yokanagan Kamloops. I have this problem that <laughs> where everything east of Abbotsford is a blur in my mind. I blame it on the fact that I currently cannot drive and have not been past Abbotsford very often in my life. <laughs> and Abbotsford, by the way, in case anyone needs a point of reference, is about as far as you can get from Vancouver by bus. You can't go past Abbotsford without getting on a Greyhound. <laughs> so that's why it's kind of a blur for me. I don't go out there that often. Um, but Susan does an amazing job. Her yarns are beautiful. I have, this is just her generic 7525 sock base, um, but she makes a delicious MCN yarn. Um, this is not her funnest colorway, but this is just what Brian shows. Um, ooh. For a better representation, I have this yarn of Susan's. Boop. It just says in British Columbia. That's not helpful. Um, so this is Susan's. This is a better representation of her dyeing of Riverstone yarns. This is her Lonely Planet colorway, which in my head is her Pluto colorway, <laughs> which I'm going to make into a sweater for myself because um, I think this is going to be great. Um, so I know this isn't socks, but it's sock yarn. And I just didn't want you all to think that this was what she dyed. She does wonderful dyeing um, with fun speckles that she does with her husband, Clyde. And they're some of my favorite people, and they're lovely. Um, other Canadian dyers, I talked about these on the blog. Um, Marianne Socks of Smith & You. Yarn is an 85-15 merino nylon blend, but her yarn is a cable ply construction. So it's five different two plies that are twisted on each other. Um, so, so far, considering the amount that Brian has been wearing these since October, they have been wearing so well. I literally will wash these and then he'll immediately put them back on his feet. Um, Canadian dyer as well, but she's not dying anymore. But of like my favorite hand dyers to treat yourself, um, this was Rain City, Rain City Yarns, Rain City Knits. Um, but she is sadly not dying anymore. Um, but she is one of my favorites. She's used to dye the anniversary colorway for Wet Coast Walls all the time, so that is one of my favorites. Um, that, um, other things, Mindville Sock Yarn, fantastic. Um, sport weight, so it practically knits itself. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, I have another one. That one's a little bit more subtle. <laughs> Those are both for Brian. Um, a real treat yourself, but for the nerd in me, this was a requirement for my life, um, was my mustache. The droids are looking for socks. These initially came, this was 150 gram pair, and this is 150 gram, um, thing. They were supposed to be, like, mismatching socks, but in order to get, like, bang for my buck, 
Um, I put contrast toes and heels in them and was able to get two pairs out of like a mismatched set, um, which I find is a good way to do it. Like if you want to treat yourself to some yarn, maybe you can like split the skein with a friend and just put contrast toe, heel, and cuff in, um, especially with the Canadian exchange. Um, I find that's an easier way to do it. <laughs> Because with most of my socks, at least, like, I can get a pair of socks out of a 50-gram skein of yarn. Like, they're not the longest leg socks, obviously, but I'm not... I don't knit really long legs on my socks anyway. Um... White birch fiber arts, also fantastic. Great self-striping. Um, I have some fiber nymph dye works yarn, which I really like. These are her sparkle. And then yarn over in New York as well. Um, yarn. Jesse's actually a good friend, um, and this was a tester of a sock blank specifically dyed for Afterthought Heel Socks, um, which is really great and really nice of her um, to have dyed that, um, but she has an Etsy shop. I'll try and link to all the dyers I can and to as many things as I can in the show notes. Um, for information on the specific socks I've showed, um, there is very, well, reasonably detailed notes on my Ravelry page. So if you want to track down yarn or anything or specific colorways, all of these socks are on my Ravelry project page, which I will link through. Hopefully I've been putting as much information in this area as I can. Um, but I'll link to the dyers as much as I can. Um, but yeah, so that's those. Um, I have many other dyers that I've obviously been hoarding. I have some Mud Punch Yarn, who is a local dyer, a local self-striping dyer that I'm, I am 100% hoarding like a dragon, because it's very hard to get her yarn, um, and Chantel does an amazing job. Um, I have a lot of wonderful hand dyers um, in my stash that you will see as I knit them up, and you'll get like a full review on them, because we're knitting from stash, so you'll see all of these guys, hopefully, in the next little bit. Um, I hope... I think that was everything. Yarns, recipes. Um, when it comes to sock yarns, just like, I guess a final, or when it comes to socks, a final thing that I would recommend is if there's a pattern that you want to try and it's like, let's say you've only knit cuff down or you've never knit a sock before, just try it. Um, if it's a cuff down sock and you only knit toe up, either try something new or you can flip that pattern around and just knit it from the other direction. Um, a lot of these socks, like the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern is designed to be knit for the cuff down. Just knit it going the other direction. It's not a big deal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if it's a charted pattern, you just need to knit the chart from the other direction, which is an easy enough thing. Um, or just try a different sock construction. Um, but yeah, when it comes to sock knitting, I think that's half the fun is you get some fun yarn and you can try a different toe, you can try a different heel, you can try a different type of ribbing, you can try a different yarn. You try a different like direction of knitting in such a simple object there's so many different things you can do and so many variations you can do um that very rarely although you're knitting the same thing over and over again very rarely are you actually knitting the same thing over and over again <laughs> um but yeah so i think that's all i have to say and i hope everyone enjoyed this multi-day <laughs> sock episode um and i will see I'll see you all next week for an actual episode of the coffee and craft podcast Bye.